Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News, broadcasting to you from Jerusalem. And in today's top stories, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu arrives in Australia for the first ever state visit by an Israeli Prime Minister. The Islamic Republic's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei declares that Israel was beginning to show signs of collapse. U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis said the Iraqi and coalition forces were making tremendous strides in the fight against Islamic State militants and pledged to stand with the Iraqi people. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu landed last night in Sydney for a first official visit by an Israeli Prime Minister to Australia. Netanyahu was greeted by his Australian counterpart, Malcolm Turbo, during which the Israeli leader declared the visit to be historic, noting it celebrated 100 years of friendship between the Australian and Jewish people. I'm honored to be the first Israeli Prime Minister to officially visit Australia. God, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> and it's, uh, uh, it celebrates, really, uh, 100 years of friendship mm. of Australia to the Jewish people and their state. Prime Minister Netanyahu, during a joint press conference with his Australian counterpart, Turbo, pointed to the absurd reality in which Palestinians continually refuse to recognize Israel as the nation-state of the Jewish people, while stressing the fact in which Jerusalem could not allow for a Palestinian state to become a reality that would ultimately turn into a bastion of radical Islam, emphasizing that Israel would be willing to grant the Palestinians with all freedoms except for the freedom to destroy the Jewish state. It's not conceivable that people will say the Palestinians should have a state and continue to call for the uh, annihilation of the Jewish state, Israel. So obviously asking uh, the Palestinians to recognize uh, a Jewish state is, uh, is mandatory and people must do that. Secondly, we know that in the realities of the Middle East, if Israel uh, is not there to ensure security, then that state very quickly will become, uh, uh, will become a, another bastion of uh, radical Islam. So this is what I've been talking about, uh, and I've been talking about it for eight years. I said we have to make sure that the Palestinians recognize the Jewish state, and we have to ensure that Israel has the overriding security control of all the territories, all the territories. Other than that, I want the Palestinians to be able to govern themselves and to have all the freedoms to do so, but not the freedom to destroy the Jewish state. They have to recognize Israel, and Israel has to have the residual military uh, control. That's my view. It hasn't changed. Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull took the historic opportunity to declare his country's unwavering support to the Jewish state while criticizing the United Nations for its perceived one-sided approach toward Israel and vowed that Sydney would never support one-sided resolutions. Nevertheless, the Australian Prime Minister reiterated Sydney's continued support for a two-state solution. Well, I, let me thank you. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, our, we do not support one-sided resolutions which uh, uh, condemn or criticise Israel of that kind. We, don't, we haven't done in the past and we won't in the future. Uh, it's a complex problem. It needs to be resolved by direct negotiations between the parties, uh, and we certainly encourage that. Uh, so that's our, that is our position, and it's, uh, it's been consistent. We are a very committed friend of Israel. We are a very consistent friend. Following their joint press conference, the two leaders held a closed-door meeting, after which Netanyahu and Turbo signed agreements fostering close defense and economic cooperation. Now to Iran, where the Islamic Republic's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei declared during a pro-Palestinian conference in Iran's capital Tehran that Israel was beginning to show signs of collapse. Khamenei, who spoke to some 700 delegates from 80 countries, said that the conference's main achievement was that Muslims and militants, whom he defined as freedom fighters from all around the world, who jointly declare their active support to the Palestinian fight against the Jewish state. یکی از دست دستاورد های این نشست ارزشمند مطرح کردن اولویت نخست جهان اسلام و آزادی خواهان جهان یعنی موضوع فلسطین و ایجاد فضای همدلی برای تحقق هدف والای حمایت از مردم فلسطین و مبارزات حق طلبانه 
The summit, titled the 6th International Conference of the Palestinian Intifada, aimed at showing solidarity of the Muslim world to the Palestinian people and their violent struggle against the Jewish state, with all speakers condemning Israel for what they said was the occupation of Muslim lands, Ayatollah Khamenei declared that a global effort against Israel was soon to emerge. The words by the Iranian Supreme Leader, who on a regular basis calls for Israel's destruction, comes amid heightened tensions with Israel and its Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, who is advocating a strong international stance against Iran's growing aggression in the Middle East and violations of international demands, including the testing of ballistic missiles capable of carrying a nuclear warhead. Now to Israel's northern neighbor, where the Israeli Air Force has allegedly attacked Syrian outposts in suburbs of Damascus. According to the reports, Israeli warplanes were circling Lebanese airspace in the Balbik area earlier last night, carrying out the attack from over Lebanon. Officials cited by Lebanese media estimated the attack was targeting Hezbollah military buses. In a counter-statement issued by Hezbollah, the Iranian-backed organization claimed that the reports of an Israeli attack against Hezbollah's outpost in Lebanon or Syria are incorrect. IDF officials refused to comment on the matter. Now to Iraq, where U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis said the Iraqi and coalition forces were making tremendous strides in the fight against the Islamic State militants and pledged to stand with the Iraqi people. Mattis, on his first trip to Iraq as Washington's top defense official, is hoping to assess the war effort as U.S.-backed Iraqi forces launched a new push to eradicate Islamic State militants from their remaining stronghold in the city of Mosul. I would just tell you that by, with, and through our allies is the way this coalition is going against Daesh. We're going to continue to go after them until we destroy them and any kind of belief in, in, in the inevitability of their message. Their message is going to be proven to be false on the battlefield as well as how we deal with their, their mythology of somehow they are the brave new uh, way. They're going to be shown to be at fault. They're going to be shown to be uh, exactly what they are, which is a bunch of murderous relics, uh, to put it bluntly. So the Iraqi army is in the fight with the coalition supporting them with full support. And as we go through this fight, Daesh will not be over with. We all know that. There will be more fights ahead. We'll stick together. And as we look at the future, uh, we are going to continue to stand by the Iraqi army, the Iraqi people who are fighting this enemy. Matis is finalizing plans at Trump's request to accelerate the defeat of the Islamic State and is expected to meet senior U.S. and Iraqi officials in Iraq. His visit comes a day after Iraqi Prime Minister Haider el-Abadi announced the start of a ground offensive on western Mosul, where Islamic State militants are essentially under siege along with an estimated 650,000 civilians. Thank you for joining us. For more updates from Israel and the region, please visit our website at tv7israelnews.com. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Yair Pinto. Have a good evening. We will see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, Please follow these simple steps. 
first press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.